Hi and welcome to Game Creation and today we're going to be looking at changing the fonts. Now this video really is going to be quite a shorter video because the video we've got tomorrow is probably the, the powerful one and I think the video tomorrow um, will be um, probably way too long if unless I do a little bit of it today. So I'm going to do a bit of it today to introduce it and then tomorrow's video we can import our own font and figure out how we're going to do that. So it's a big video tomorrow, shorter one today. So let's get started. So uh, the thing I want to do is import a font. Um, and I've opened up the same project as we've used all week. And uh, at the moment, I've got quite a nice font in here, Seco UI. Um, but I want to change it. And the way I, reason I want to change it is um, that I want to do it programmatically. I want to do it behind the scenes because you, I, I can't um, accomplish what I want to do tomorrow's video by doing it through this menu. So we're going to change it to a, like a garish looking font, um, this show card gothic. And you can see it's a lot thicker, so it's a lot wider than the Sego UI. And so if I run it now, you can see that actually it takes up a lot more space and it means it's kind of breaking our, our thing, although this is dummy text anyway but um, it's a lot wider and this is something we've got to be careful of that, all, that we make this decision before we write the dialogue um, otherwise we might end up writing way too much dialogue for the for the width of font that we've got and this is something that's a bane of any game application or website designer is that the fonts just are all completely different sizes um, when it comes to width um, if you want to know how what the maximum width of your font is going to be um, you normally use a capital letter M uh, capital M because that's the widest font and um, four widest letter in most fonts. Um, so the reason I've switched it to that is that we can see whether um, what I do next will have an effect. And I always try and pick a font that looks um, garish um, so you can see whether the programming works. And so I'm going to go into the event editor and I need to change that font programmatically, change that font in the event editor. So we're going to go to the dialog box um, group and we're going to say at the start of the frame I want to change this font and it's very simple to do, you just go to text font name and then capital S Sego UI so I'm saying I want to switch it to the Sego UI font and hopefully if I run that that looks perfect, ok so that's the Sego UI font now one of the issues with this is you cannot guarantee that the user has Sego UI and um, I think that um, by default, if the um, user doesn't have Sego UI, um, Click Team's quite clever. It thinks, oh, hang on, they don't have the font. And I think it defaults to Arial, um, which is, is quite a nice font. It's not awful. Um, but it might ruin um, the spacing that you've got. And so if, if um, Arial is a wider font, which I don't think it is, but if it is a wider font, then this might cover the press A to continue here. Um, which isn't going to be very good. And one, one of the things we might do is uh, limit it to um, two lines of text and then there's a little bit of overflow in case there's an issue. But in tomorrow's video we're going to be figuring out how we import our own font, how we get the fonts and how we import them into our project. Um, one thing I will say that I had to do, um, because I'm on the newest build of 2.5+, um, I talked on the forums last week and uh, something that came out because I tried to do this video last week and I wasn't able to but the um, way I got around it was going to runtime options and changing this direct 3D um, which was 11, I've changed it to 9 um, direct 3D 11 probably you don't have unless you've got the newest build of 2.5 plus you're probably on uh, direct 3D 9 anyway um, the click team people are saying um, that they will look into this and they're working on making sure that fonts and stuff work with direct 3d 11 at the moment they don't um, and so my game's not like massively um, uh, needing direct 3d 11 anyway um, but there are some performance benefits from using direct 3d 11 rather than using 9 so I'm um, as soon as they say yep yeah, it's good to go uh, then I'll switch it and test it but for now it's not so that's that's a really important thing. If you're using the same version of Click Team that I am, um, then just bear that in mind for um, today's video and especially for tomorrow's video. It just will not work unless you make that change. And that's quite common um, for new 
uh, applications, uh, new builds of Click Team. That there's a few bugs around, um, and it, I would recommend if you've started a project, don't update anything during the duration of that project. Um, only update when you've finished a project and you're kind of ready to na navigate the issues that come up. Because I have updated before and it's broken bits, um, and it you can get a bit um, impatient um, waiting for them to fix it. But they do fix it really quickly relative to um, other programs I have that things just uh, seem to hang around as issues for quite a while. So as I said, shorter video today, but a really, really big um, video tomorrow that I've had two weeks to prep um, and I probably still will be fluttering, but we shall see. I'll see you then. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to see more from us, please click subscribe. We release videos every single weekday at 7 p.m. UK time. Thank you.